As the ISS approaches the end of its operational life, the need for a new generation of orbital infrastructure has become increasingly urgent. With decades of service behind it, the ISS faces mounting maintenance challenges and a limited lifespan, prompting space agencies and private companies alike to seek its successor. In this context, commercial space stations have emerged as promising candidates to carry forward human presence in low Earth orbit, offering greater flexibility, efficiency, and innovation. One of the leading players in this transition is Vast Space, a private aerospace company with bold ambitions to build the world's first commercial space stations. By combining rapid development strategies with a focus on safety and in-house technology integration, Vast aims to redefine how humans live and work in space. So, how did Vast accomplish this with its first Haven space station? Let's find out this on today's episode of Alpha Tech. Vast Space was founded in 2021 by 49-year-old programmer and businessman Jed McCaleb. Vast Space announced in mid-December a partnership with SpaceX to launch two missions to the ISS, which will be milestones in the company's plan to launch its first space station, Haven 1, later in 2025. The missions, still without official launch dates, will fall within NASA's private astronaut missions program through which the space agency wants to promote the development of a space economy in low Earth orbit. For VAST, this is part of a long-term business strategy. Building an outpost that artificially mimics gravity will take 10 to 20 years, as well as an amount of money that we don't have now, Hayat admits. However, to win the most important contract in the space station market, which is the replacement of ISS with our founders' resources, we will launch four people on a SpaceX Dragon in 2025. They will stay aboard Haven 1 for two weeks, then return safely, demonstrating to NASA our capability before any competitor. What Vast Space is trying to do by showing its capabilities is get involved in NASA's Commercial Destinations in Low Earth Orbit CLD program, a project the space agency inaugurated in 2021 with a $415 million grant to support the development of private low Earth orbit stations. The money was initially allocated to three different projects, one from aerospace and defense company Northrop Grumman, which has since exited the program, a joint venture called Star Lab, and Orbital Reef from Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin. VAST has no contract with the U.S. Space Agency, but it aims to outstrip its competitors by showing NASA that it can put a space station into space ahead of these others. By doing this, VAST is borrowing from SpaceX's playbook, not only has Vast Space drawn some of its employees and the design of equipment and vehicles from Elon Musk's company, but it's also trying to replicate its approach to the market, to be ready before anyone else by having technologies and processes already qualified and validated in orbit. We are lagging behind, Hayat says. What can we do to win? Our answer, in the second half of 2025, will be the launch of Haven 1 Haven 1, the world's first commercial space station, is designed to redefine astronaut life, focusing on comfort, safety, and functionality in microgravity conditions. Unlike the stark, utilitarian aesthetic of the International Space Station, ISS, Haven 1 adopts a warm and inviting design. Fire-resistant maple wood veneer slats line the common areas, creating a natural, elegant ambiance. Soft, padded surfaces cover walls and other areas to prevent injuries as crew members navigate in zero gravity addressing the practical challenges of a weightless environment. This human-centric approach, guided by designer Peter Russell Clark and NASA veteran astronaut Andrew Fustel, prioritizes both psychological well-being and operational efficiency, setting a new standard for space habitation. The 24-cubic-meter common area serves as the heart of Haven 1, functioning as a multifunctional hub for collaboration, dining, exercise, and relaxation. A standout feature is the 1.1-meter domed observation window, offering breathtaking panoramic views of Earth, which not only enhances the aesthetic appeal, but also supports the mental health of the crew. The area includes a deployable table to maximize space efficiency and real-time displays for monitoring station status, such as temperature and lighting, which can be adjusted to align with circadian rhythms. This space is designed to foster crew cohesion and productivity, drawing on lessons from the ISS to create a more intuitive and less disorienting environment for daily activities. 
Haven One's four private crew quarters offer a significant upgrade over the ISS's cramped sleeping arrangements, providing slightly larger spaces tailored for rest and personal activities. Each room features built-in storage, a vanity, a custom amenities kit, entertainment options, and SpaceX Starlink connectivity for seamless communication with Earth. A patent-pending sleep system, approximately queen-sized, ensures customized pressure distribution to enhance comfort in microgravity, tackling the common issue of restless sleep in space. These private spaces balance practicality with a sense of personal retreat, making long-duration missions more sustainable and enjoyable for astronauts. The station's fitness facilities are integrated into the common area, featuring a resistance band system designed to maintain bone, muscle, and cardiovascular health in microgravity. This system supports both linear and rotational exercises, with anchors for upper and lower body workouts, offering a customizable approach to fitness. Meanwhile, the Haven One Lab, connected to the common area, is a cutting-edge microgravity research, development, and manufacturing platform. Equipped with 10 payload slots and operable remotely via SpaceX Starlink's gigabit speed internet, the lab's intuitive design facilitates scientific experiments in a weightless environment, informed by astronaut feedback to ensure ease of use. Overall, Haven One's interior stands in sharp contrast to the ISS's equipment-heavy, hospital-like corridors, as described by astronauts like Chris Hadfield. This place is like a luxury resort, reflecting enthusiasm for its innovative design. Optimized storage, modular layouts, and padded surfaces ensure safety and efficiency, while the blend of luxury and functionality caters to both scientific research and crew well-being. Although Haven 1 is still in development, with a planned launch no earlier than May 2026, its design promises a revolutionary approach to commercial space stations. Once the Haven 1 mission has launched, Hayat is confident that Haven 2, the larger modular second station, will soon follow. The first module will be ready by 2028 so that NASA can have two years to test it while ISS is still operational. Three more identical modules will go into orbit between 2029 and 2030, he says. The first difference from Haven 1 will be certification from NASA, which will then become our main customer. Plus, Haven 2 will have two docking ports and be five meters longer, with twice the pressurized volume. This will allow us to have more life support resources and more space. The station's core module, aboard a SpaceX Starship, will then be launched in 2030 with the already launched modules attached to it. It will have a 7-meter diameter, an airlock for extravehicular activities, a docking port, and a robotic arm. The original four modules will be reconfigured according to their characteristics to add four more in 2031 and 2032. In total, the station will then have a habitable volume of 550 cubic meters, capable of accommodating up to 12 people. ISS has a habitable volume of 388 cubic meters. By then, tests to artificially reproduce gravity will have already begun, but not on Haven 2, which, having to serve as a laboratory, will have to meet weightlessness criteria imposed by NASA. The tests will be carried out on Haven 1, which we plan to leave in orbit for three years until 2028, says Hayat. Before we run out of operations, we will rotate it to replicate lunar gravity on the payload portion, but without a crew. This will bring us closer to our corporate goal of continuing to promote artificial gravity. Impossible not to notice, however, is how vast space's ambitions are focused on a commercial market that is non-existent to date. Even to this challenge, Hayat has an answer. So far, all space stations have been built by governments and at exorbitant prices. Our project will allow a cost reduction of about five times, or maybe more. We are sure it is a profitable horizon, but we are not naive. Certain conditions will need to be met. Key, Hayat says, will be securing NASA as an anchor customer and building from there. If we guarantee the interest of all the nations in the ISS program, but also attract countries hitherto excluded from the market, if in short, we know how to create an efficient and low-cost company, our dreams will be within reach. VAST, a pioneering commercial space station developer, is making significant strides in its mission to expand human presence and scientific research in low Earth orbit. On April 8th, the company announced three new payload customers for its Haven 1 space station, 
set to launch no earlier than May 2026. These partners, Japan Manned Space Systems Corporation, JAMSS, Interstellar Lab, and Exobiosphere, join existing collaborators Redwire and Yuri, marking a growing global interest in Haven 1's cutting-edge microgravity research capabilities. Haven 1, VAST's first orbital outpost, is designed to host up to 10 mid-deck lockers for scientific payloads, offering a state-of-the-art platform for experiments in microgravity. JAMS, a veteran in supporting research on Japan's Kibo module aboard the International Space Station, ISS, will contribute a versatile multi-purpose payload facility to Haven 1, enabling a wide range of microgravity experiments. Interstellar Lab, a French company focused on sustainable life sciences, will deploy its Eden 1.0 facility, tailored for advanced biological research, including plant growth studies critical for long-term space habitation and terrestrial applications. Meanwhile, Luxembourg-based Exobiosphere will leverage its biotechnology payload to conduct pharmaceutical and healthcare experiments, aiming to revolutionize drug discovery through the unique conditions of space. These partnerships underscore the transformative potential of microgravity as a catalyst for groundbreaking scientific and technological advancements, said Max Hayat, VAST's chief executive, in a statement. Speaking at the 40th Space Symposium, Hayat revealed that demand for Haven 1's payload slots has surged as the launch date approaches. Initially, it took some effort to convince potential partners, he noted in an interview. Now, we're seeing more interest than we have available slots. With most of the station's mid-deck lockers already allocated to partners or reserved for crew use, VAST is considering selling only one or two additional slots to maintain operational flexibility. The appeal of Haven 1 lies not only in its advanced research facilities, but also in its role as an alternative to the ISS, which has long dominated microgravity research. Haven 1 offers cutting-edge in-space research capabilities that align perfectly with our high-throughput screening platforms, said Kyle Asierno, chief executive of Exobiosphere. Partnering with VAST accelerates our mission to transform drug discovery. The station's mid-deck lockers, designed to the same standards as those on the ISS, ensure compatibility with existing research protocols. However, Haven 1 introduces a unique aesthetic twist. The lockers are concealed behind sleek wood paneling at one end of the module. When the payloads aren't in use, the crew can close the paneling for a more comfortable and relaxing environment, Hayat explained, emphasizing the station's human-centric design. As Haven 1's launch draws closer, VAST is positioning itself at the forefront of the commercial space industry, capitalizing on the growing demand for microgravity research and the expanding opportunities in low Earth orbit. With a diverse roster of international partners and a clear roadmap for future stations, VAST is not only building infrastructure in space, but also fostering a new era of scientific discovery and human exploration. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.